Hello everyone, it's me Sanjay Vasu back again for another video. This time I'm doing it on Cambridge O Level Mathematics Syllabus D Paper 2 Calculator for Examination from 2025. This is a specimen paper, let's start. Before I go to the questions, I will show you this list of formulas which is given at the front page of every O Level exam. And these formulas are always given. Let's start. Question 1. Calculate 4 divided by the square root of 0 0.0025. That'll simply be equal to 4 divided by 0 0.05. 80. Question 2. Work out 40% of $530. That's simply going to be equal to 40 by 100 times 530. And we can cancel a few zeros to get $212. That's the answer. Now I can go to question 3. This is a part of a bus timetable from New York to Valley. A. Work out the journey time from New York to Petersburg. Give your answer in hours and minutes. So the 915 bus from New York reaches Petersburg at 1940, all in 24 hour time. So we can just subtract these times to get a 10 hours and 25 minutes, the journey time. Part B. Arjun arrives at the bus station in Washington at 1.36 p.m. Work out how long he waits for the 9.15 bus from New York to arrive. Give your answer in minutes. So he's there at 1.36 p.m. This can be converted to 24 hour time as 13.36. Now, the bus from New York arrives at Washington at 3.20 p.m. or 15.20 hours. So he waits 15.20 minus 13.36 and doing this correctly, we get 1 hour 44 minutes but then we also need to realize that it says in the question to give your answer in minutes and therefore we convert this 1 hour to 60 minutes add 44 to get 104 minutes that's the answer now I can go to question 4 pens cost 53 cents each a. Work out the maximum number of pens Mariam can buy with $15 that'll simply be equal to $15, which is 1500 cents, divided by the cost of one pen, 53 cents. That'll be equal to, let's get a calculator out. Here we go, 1500 divided by 53, which is 28 pence. Since we have to round down to the nearest whole number. Why? Because pens cannot really be split in half or split into any fraction. Therefore, whole numbers are the only things accepted. And if, even if this was 28.99, you cannot write 29. That's wrong, because 28.99 means you get 28 pens with some amount of change. Over here, it's not a huge question since it's 28.3, but still, just a good reminder right here. Now for part B, work out the change she receives in cents. Now she buys 28 pens, 53 cents each. How much change does she receive? That'll be 1500 cents minus 53 times 28, since that's the cost used for the pens. Now, if you do 1500 minus 53 times 28, that'll be 16 cents change. By the way, I've used this symbol a lot. This symbol simply means cents. The answer is 16. Let's go to question 5. The table shows how a class of 30 children travel to school. The information will be shown in the pie chart. There's three different ways and each of them have the number of children given. A. Complete the table. So you have the pie chart angle which we need to find. We know that there's 30 children. So the angle is going to be, let's say for walk, 18 by 30. That's the fraction of students. And multiply by 360 degrees since one circle has 360 degree angle which you can fill in using a pie chart. And if you do that, you get 216 degrees. Now for a car, it's three by 30 times 360 degrees, which is gonna be 36 degrees. For a bus, it's nine by 30 times 360, which is 108 degrees. B, draw a pie chart to show this information. I don't have an actual protractor with me but I will show you how to do it. So you measure for example 36 degrees using a protractor and this will be 
the sector for car travel. Now for bus, from this line here, we measure 108 degrees and draw a line corresponding to that angle. So this angle is 108 degrees and this will be bus. Now since there's only three different methods of travel, there's two already done for sectors. The third sector, the remaining one, is going to be 216 degrees automatically and that is the sector for walk. That's the answer. That's all you have to do. Just make sure you measure using a protractor accurately. Question 6. The diagram shows a cuboid. Calculate its volume. That's simply the length times the breadth times the height. That's 8 times 4 times 6.5, which is equal to... Let's get a calculator. 8 times 4 times 6.5 to get 208 centimeters cubed. That's the answer. Question 7. Alex buys a shirt at price of 14.75 pounds. Pedro buys a shirt at a price of $21.99. The exchange rate is $1 equals 0 0.73 pounds. Calculate how much more Pedro pays than Alex. Give your answer in dollars and cents, correct the nearest cent. Since we need to give in dollars and cents, we can convert Alex's money spent into dollars from pounds. So since $1 represents 0 0.73 pounds, that's given. Therefore, 14.75 pounds, when you convert to dollars, is going to be equal to 14.75 divided by 0 0.73 and using a calculator we get 20.21 dollars to the nearest cent of course and how much more Pedro pays than Alex Pedro pays 21.99 I'll write the dollar a bit better 21.99 minus 20.21 which is one dollar and 78 cents more that's the answer now i can go to question eight the diagram shows the hexagon by an equation and solve it to find the value of x so the interior angle sum of a hexagon is going to be equal to 180 times the n minus 2, where n is number of sides. 180 times 6 minus 2, since there's a hexagon, we get 720 degrees. And that'll be equal to all the sum of these angles. 2x plus 152 plus x minus 30 plus 144 plus 100 plus 120. And that means 3x plus 486 equals 720 if we simplify all of this. That means 3x equals 234 degrees and when you get x, we simply divide 234 by 3 to get 78 degrees. That's our answer. Question 9, 3.56, 5, root 196, 8, root 7, 12. These are six numbers. From the list, write down a number that is a, a multiple of 3. That's simply 12. B, a cubed number. That's 8. A is equal to 2 cubed. As for A, multiple of 3, 12 is simply 3 times 4. C, a prime number. The only prime number here is 5. Decimals cannot be counted as prime numbers. Irrational numbers can't be prime. And therefore, the only answer is 5. And speaking of irrational numbers, the next one is an irrational number. No, this is their only circle root 7. Why is root 96 not an irrational number? Well, that's simply because root 96 can be written as an integer, plus or minus 14. This actually has a solution. But root 7, it does not have any integer solutions. And it does not have any terminating decimal solutions either. They all are decimals which never end. Numbers like root 2, root 3, even root 7 here, and then even pi. They are decimals which never end, but they're not becoming decimals since there's no pattern. Therefore, it's an irrational number. Now you can go to question 10. Question 10. Anna has a bag containing 10 beads. There are four red and the rest are blue. A. Anna takes two beads from the bag at random without replacement, which means after she takes the first bead, she doesn't keep it back. 
complete the tree diagram. So there are four red beads, the rest are blue, which means out of 10 beads, there are six blue. Probability of taking bead, which is blue, is six by 10 on the first bead. Now for the second bead, if she takes the first bead is red, then the second bead, there's a lower chance of getting red than the first time because the number of reds has decreased by one. The number of total beads is also decreased by one, we get three by nine. Now the number of blue is going to be still 6, but the total will be 9. That probability has increased. Now, it's the opposite if we take blue as the first bead. Now the second bead, it will only be 5 blue because 1 has been taken out, and 9 total because 1 has been taken out. And the remaining is red, which is 4 by 9. B, calculate the probability that Anna takes 2 red beads. That's 4 by 10 times 3 by 9, which is going to be 2 by 15 if we write it in simplified form. Since this is 12 by 90, and dividing both sides by 6, we get 2 by 15. That's the answer. Question 11. Maya builds a patio in a garden in the shape of a cylinder, with radius 2 meters and a height of 0 0.08 meters. A. The patio is made of concrete. The density is 2,500 kg per meter cubed. Calculate the mass of the concrete used to build the patio. Density equals mass divided by volume. So that means mass is equal to density times volume, rearranging the formula, that's all. And since we need to find the mass, we have the density, we need to find the volume to get the mass. So we have the radius and height of the cylinder. The volume is going to be equal to pi r squared times h for any cylinder. In this case, it's pi times 2 squared and then times 0 0.08, all in meters. And now let's get a calculator out to do this. 2 squared is 4 times 0 0.08. And then we do times pi to get 1.0053. And this is in meters cubed. Now the mass is going to be density by volume, which is 2500, which is given in the question, times 1.0053. And doing that, we multiply by 2500 to get 2513.27 kilograms, and that will be our answer. 2513.27. Now going over to part B, Maya wants to put tiles on the surface of a patio as shown on the diagram. Each tile is a sector with arc length 75 centimeters. Explain why the tiles do not fit exactly on the surface of the patio. Well, the only reason is that these tiles are not fitting exactly due to there's not a whole number of tiles space to be fit there around like sectors of pizza slices. So these tiles act like pizza slices. But the only thing is if these pizza slices cannot fill in the circle exactly, then of course they won't fit exactly on the surface, right? And how do we calculate that? We can find the circumference of the circle divided by the arc length here. Now, 75 centimeters, let's convert this to meters, 0 0.75 meters. Circumference of the circle, which is the full patio, is going to be 2 times pi times the ra radius, which is 2 meters. And that will be 4 times pi, which is equal to 12.566 meters. Now, the number of tiles required is going to be this value divided by, let's see, the 0 0.75 meters, which is given as the arc length. So we can do that to get 16.755 tiles, which is not a whole number, right? And we need a whole number of tiles for it to fit exactly. But over here, since it's not a whole number, we can say that there's a reason that it won't fit exactly on the patio. The number of tiles required is not a whole number. That'll be our answer. Now going to question 12, 
Find all the integer values of x to satisfy the inequality minus 6 less than or equal to 3x less than 6. That's simply going to be when we separate this into two different inequalities and then we solve both. So minus 2 is less than or equal to x and x is less than 2. Now we bring them back together to get minus 2 less than or equal to x less than 2. This is satisfied by a particular set of integers. We can allow minus 2 since it's less than or equal to x, so it can be equal to. Then we have minus 1, and then we have 0, and then we have 1. 2 is not allowed since it's not less than or equal to a sign here, it's only less than. And there's no line on the bottom, therefore no equal to 2. So these four integers can be allowed. That's the answer. Question 13. The speed time graph shows the first 10 seconds of the journey of a car. A. By drawing a tangent, estimate the gradient of the curve at t equals 2. So we need to use the ruler and place it so that it only touches the point on this curve where t is equal to 2. It should only touch this. The tangent should only barely touch that point and not touch any other points. And we just move this a bit to get it accurate. There we go. Now this tangent, let's just take the point over here, which is 2, 2.2. So this is 2, 2.2 and the point intersecting the y-axis or the speed axis is going to be 0 in the x-coordinates and the y is around 1.2. Therefore the gradient, this being that is m, that's y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1 and that will be the y of this point minus the y of this point divided by the x of this point minus the x of this point 2.2 minus 1.2 by 2 minus 0 that's simply a half even if you get slightly above or slightly below this value it's still fine this is just an estimate of the gradient it's not the exact gradient there's a range of answers for this question it just has to be near to a half. That's the answer. Part B. Write down what the gradient of the curve represents in terms of the car's motion for the first 10 seconds of its journey. Well, this is speed time graph. And the gradient represents the derivative of the speed, which is the acceleration. And the acceleration of what? The car. That's the answer.